late turn up last night and uh, as you can see you can well use and listen to them spindle bearings. Two belt system, running two belts, one of them's barely together, all built was off. Chuck's been a bit abused and unfortunately the bed is pretty warm but we're not leveled yet we've got it plonked on two pieces of wood no leveling at all and four inches that's just under a thou of taper so maybe the wear looks worse than it actually is Need some switches because they're all sticky. spindle bearings coming tomorrow and I'm going to change the spindle bearings as and when I get a chance. So it may not be a right. Okay, welcome back. I've not done anything for a while, um, just been busy, same as everybody else really probably, um, but there's a new machine in the shop and I wanted to show you and just explain to you what's happened and what we're going to do with it. So you'll see here we've got Prototrack lathe. Now, I was lucky with the Hass mill, which is over there running, currently earning me money, which is good. Um, that was an auction buy, and it needed a few bits, and I must admit, in January, I spent about five grand on new Z-axis ball screw and bearings, and Y-axis ball screw and bearings, um, no, sorry, X-axis ball screw and bearings, and then Y-axis bearings. So I spent a few quid on it, but it was just old and tired and they needed replacing and now it's good again and it's running, so that's fine. But I wanted a manual lathe again. Now for those who've seen my old videos, you'll see that I used to have a, um, an XYZ, what was it, it was a ELX lathe control. Really nice machine, smaller machine, but a lot newer than this, I think it was a 2012 and I sold it to put towards the Mazak uh, or Hyundai Quick Turn 15. But since that's been gone, I've needed a manual slash sort of seven CNC lathe, but just one you can throw something in the chuck, um, do quick jobs, one off small batches and things like that. So I've been keeping my eye out and again, looking at the auctions because you can get some good deals, I bought this. Now I didn't go and look at it and that has bitten me in the arse. Um, right, so when the machine turned up, first thing you do when you look at it is look at the bed now let me get a cloth if I can even get a cloth out of here right so let's just wipe down some of this bed now you can probably see on there now that looks quite bad Obviously this flat's not done, that's only for the tower stock. Now this V, which is what your carriage is sitting on up here, not too bad. Now the back of the bed, where it is sitting on the flat, again, for 21 years old, probably what you'd expect. Now I've got the ball screw and everything removed on this already, because we haven't looked at everything and tried a fair few things. Let's see if I push this out of the way, and we wipe down here. Now, look at that. That, unfortunately, 
is what happens when you buy a lathe that's obviously been neglected but you don't look at in poor hand and they are relatively deep it's hard to see so yeah a couple of big scores on this flat which obviously doesn't matter um, and then if you look at this here it's probably going to be hard to show you but that's pretty bad too and that's got a lip on the bottom although it doesn't touch right on that very bottom this feels awful yeah that is absolutely had it to be fair um, to the point where you tighten up the gibbs and you still have about 0 0.3 of lift in this saddle as you move the hand wheel the whole saddle is kinking up because it's too tight and it's trying to ride up the ball screw um, even with the gibbs tight and then it gets to the point where it's just about here you can get it to 0.2 or 0.3 slop which is still horrendous unusable um, and then if you go back 50 mil it will stall the motor because it's jammed up too tight on the bed so yeah didn't have a lot of options with this um, the machine wasn't expensive just as well really which is why I bought it blind um, just from a few pictures now I looked at a few of these machines up and running for sale in people's shops and what you what I found was the 420 which was, which was the bigger machine or is the bigger machine and after speaking to XYZ the Proto 420 is mechanically um, base wise bed wise size wise still the exact same machine as the current RLX 425 um, so nothing mechanically has changed same ball screws um, same bed design same headstock obviously it's just got a lot lot newer control on it being current and this one being 21 years old um, so I had two choices really um, I break the machine for parts because unless someone buys it blind and I wouldn't on an auction they don't tell you about bed wearing this and the other you have to go and see for yourself and because I didn't that's my call and I was willing to take that risk and this time around I was unlucky but I wouldn't sell this to someone uh, blindly not advertising that the bed is too worn to use uh, well if you want it accurate it's too worn to use you could probably use it for roughing stuff out in a job shop but um, I couldn't sell it like that so two choices were strip it for parts which yes some stuff is worth money on this um, as spares but all the spares mechanically are still available um, even the control units and the pendants and that which I'll go into in a minute but my other choice was I've already dropped a chunk of money on this machine and if I sell it for parts I'm not going to get that money back now the other option is get the bed reground now I've never had that done never looked into it never inquired about it but I thought I'll get a price and I spoke to a company in Nuneaton which is in the UK um, called Unislide and I spoke to a fellow there called Lewis about regrinding the bed and that's what's going to happen the bed's going to be reground um, they will remove the head because this is on flat ways here so the head will get removed and the whole lot will be ground down then the saddle will get removed and ground and the tail stock will be done um, I'm not sure whether they build up the tur site or they grind it but whichever way they do it it's all done fully rebuilt fully reground on the bed um, then hand scraped scrape back in the saddle scrape back in the cross slide scrape back in the tail stock and then they'll scrape underneath the head and on the bed they reinstall the headstock and reinstall the tail stock and do full alignment now this is a very rigid machine because the bed is part of the base so this whole bit here and this here and everything here is attached and if you see by my hand there that's a big bed you know that is a big way um, and even a saddle you look at the size of the the cross slide section here on the saddle and it is huge and the tool post is huge everything about it is a big machine so it's very rigid um, and I spoke to them 
to ask what's the gist and how good will it be when it's done because it's not cheap to get it done but it still doesn't price it out of um, an option so they say when it's done and it's reground obviously they're only doing the surfaces the hand scraping and the cross slide the slab and everything I just said um, you need good screws on it um, to make it nice and accurate still the X I tested before I took this apart the X is very good still really really good but I have bought new um, precision bearings for it just to tighten it up and a support bearing and on the Z the ball screw has a bit of slop in it now the bearing was quite bad on the Z so I bought new bearings and what I'm going to do is when it gets put back together before all the enclosure goes back on I'm going to test the Z new bearings and if it's still bad it's not a big job well while it's all apart like this it's literally 10 minutes I can take the screw out and I can have another one the next day so I'm going to wait because that's another sort of 1500 pounds for the Z axis ball screw and nut assembly that I may or may not need but it will be done because without them again the machine potentially going to have slop in it and not be very accurate so I'll be doing bit by bit I'll do some videos of this one um, showing what's been done obviously it was in worse condition than this I scraped out 21 years worth of chips and stuff that was literally in here it was just piled up obviously the whole enclosure there's the back of the enclosure that's the back part down there and then just stored out the way for the minute you've got the doors and bits and pieces everything's off there um, back of the machine this guard was broken which is the cable track that was snapped in half down this end and then from there to probably here was jam-packed with chips absolutely packed couldn't get these cables out um, so what I had to do was jiggle it and bang it and poke it and when it come out two of these cables which go to the front panel for the forward reverse lever and the emergency stops and everything are actually split so I've got cable to replace them but again cleaned out copious amounts of chips a few weeks from the head stop but nothing untowards you've got coolant pump which is working there's a swarf tray which I did clean out fully before I delved into it and then decided I'm going to take this thing apart in there and reflection is 20 litres yes 20 litres almost no 16 litres of brand spanking new hydraulic oil dogs having a kip when I got this there was no oil in the head stock and the bearings sound rough um, the bearings need replacing as well and what I think it's been put to auction for one is because the bed's worn and everyone's abused it um, the wipers that were on there were just destroyed and no good for nothing but the reason why the bearings are so bad is these have the headstock and the bearings fed by an oil pump continuously that oil pump there's the pump and on the back of the pump is that there and that is a tricoidal oil pump now the bushings in that were shot and the reason I lost my 16 litres of fluid was because that pump was knackered and the seal was completely um, out of shape where the shaft was completely um, mi misaligned where the bushings had disintegrated and it was whipping around and the oil shaft seal was um, egg shaped so it allowed the oil to just run out now looking by the mess of the machine and everything down the back someone or everybody where this machine was based in the shop has probably used this um, and thought well it's leaking oil it's not my job to fix it um, I just need to turn this little bit blah 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 and that's just carried on probably for a long long time and the bearings although it's not horrendous but they're noisy might as well change them um, but I rebuilt the pump so that doesn't leak anymore it now has a really nice oil feed um, comes in here splits off loads of different ways and every individual gear and bearing is fed and then this is a sight glass to show you that the oil circulating and then that one down there is your level and even though the bearings are worn uh, or a little bit noisy they sound 10 times better already just the fact they're being fed properly with oil now so that's a major issue that's fixed and was really cheap to sort new oil which will obviously get dropped out again um, but that's irrelevant that's a simple fix um, the pump down the bottom wasn't working now that is working now the rear end of the saddle 
and the axis is getting fed with oil. This front section and this front wiper isn't and the ball screw isn't and it's probably another reason why the z-axis is so worn and potentially this way is so bad because um, it's not so much wear it's definitely worn but it's more gouges and abuse from lack of maintenance and cleanliness that has caused this um this bed the most damage but i've sorted the oil pump we sorted there was it's a three belt pulley it had one belt on it one belt missing and one belt was in about six pieces but it was still attached on there now we've got a new encoder belt we've got new motor pulley belts we've got new bearings as said for the x and the z on the uh, angular contact end and the support end we have got these are the new main spindle bearings there is more auxiliary bearings in there but they're just run-of-the-mill bearings five quid 15 quid they're the high precision um, taper roller bearings which go in there depending on how much of it has to come apart i may or may not change all the little bearings at the same time sometimes with their gearboxes to get the main shaft out everything has to come out because it interlocks but if some of it is able to stay in it's quiet enough that I'm happy to just change the spindle ones and I'll leave it at that. Um, but this wasn't the route I was gonna go down with this machine. I didn't plan on spending this much money, but for what it will cost me at the end after it's been reground, it will have new bearings. It will have, I'm guessing probably, a new ball screw on the Z, an excellent one on the X, which look of it, I think is pretty new. Um, Same new in the last few years anyway. And then, fully re-scraped, fully re-ground bed, good screws, good oil feed, good bearings. Yes, it's old, it will be all cleaned up, it'll all be working. Um, the control is the one worry, as you can see. Been around for a long time, these have. I checked with XYZ, sorry, before I started spending this money, that all the electronics are still gonna be available. So the last thing I wanna do is go to all this effort, and then six months or a year down the line, have an issue with the module or the pendant and then they say oh, sorry discontinued you know we can't fix them we can't supply them but they said yes they're expensive a new pendant is 2100 quid um a lot of money but if it breaks it's it, it's gonna have to be done um because he said please be aware that they are at the age where they are failing um and they are that old but if you do have to do that, the one there's only one good sort of thing is one that is still available and it will be nice and new and shiny. And the other is that it gets changed from a CRT monitor to an LCD. Now the other bit is the control module, the computer module. And again, that is available, 2,100 pound, but it will be available for the foreseeable. So there's no issues. Now one of these lathes in average Joe condition, straight out of the shop, um, just working and fairly used and abused in the 420 size um, goes for around seven grand for a, a rough working one up to sort of 12 13 for a nice working one so realistically I'm not going to be out of pocket um, when this is done if I come to ever sell it because it will genuinely be a good machine that's been completely reground and as you can see here it will be stripped and everything's going to be rebuilt bar a few components um, that i don't think will be needed while it's off we're going to rewire it because as said the wires that run from here they run through the cross slide underneath through the cable tract and into the control cabinet now you can look at some of these power cables there that's for the motor and the encoder cable there's not many go through. These are one cable and you can buy a whole new one of that for 300 pound. But these are individual. And this stuff here, if you bend that slightly, that's brittle and it literally cracks. The wires inside it don't crack, but they're in a bad way. In there, some contactors. There was a couple of downed relays because reverse wasn't working. Um, someone had wired up the switch and then by the look of it, it just lashed it up so that forward worked on the spindle But now forward and reverse both work correctly All the interlocks are currently wired and they're down there because obviously I've taken all the um, Enclosures off the machine 
I needed them plugged in so it still runs when I'm checking stuff out. We've got the variable speed um, inverter here, which is all working fine. And although they're a bit dirty, the actual cables and everything is in there and it's pretty good. Um, maybe, just maybe, I'll replace some of these and the magnetic brake at a later date because it breaks, but I think it could break better when you stop the spindle. So yeah, that is it. That's where we're at, that's what we're doing. So this was never gonna be a project, but now it is gonna be a project. And I'll do bit by bit. I'm gonna strip it down, I'll show you before I send it off. It's gonna be away for around six to eight weeks, maybe 10 weeks. So it's not gonna be quick. And then I've got to put it back together. But by the time this goes away, gets re-scraped and rebuilt and everything on the bed, then when it comes back, I would have redone the wiring. I would have cleaned up the cabinet I'm not going to paint it. A lot of people would say, why are you there? Just paint it. But getting some of this paint off, this original stuff is thick. That's probably two millimetres thick from the actual paint coat to the base. Now, I've done it on a machine before. If you look back at some of my older videos, my Bridgeport, my Harrison, and it's, it's just a massive job. It really is, and I, I don't have the time. So, yes, it would look nice painted, but if you don't, completely bare metal it which is a lot of hours um probably a few hundred hours on my old lathe and my bridge port stripping it and doing that um, what i'm going to do is clean everything off put it back together because i'm not this is not going to be a machine that i've got for sale unless i ever get luckily enough to get more work in the next year or two and i want to upgrade to a brand new machine but that's not likely just yet so i'm going to clean it degrease it obviously you can see there's no chips built up and hidden areas and then I'll put it back together. So yes, it will be unpainted, but it will be a honest machine, you know? Not slapped with a coat of paint, trying to hide anything. A um, few new stickers, a few new bits and bobs, a few new bearings to the door. The cable pulls, if anyone has ever seen these machines, these main enclosure has one big pull down door, which comes over the front casing. And that works off of wire rope um, and springs and as you pull it down the springs are loaded to help you lift it back up now all the roller bearings were shot and the actual wire ropes were broken so lifting the door when you lifted it up if you weren't careful it crushed your fingers and it's probably a 40 kilo door so it really if the only reason it wouldn't cut them is because the panel's flat at the back but when it catches your fingers like it did as soon as we got it bloody hell does that hurt so we're going to be sorting that out i've got the new cables um the new wire rope down here these are some of the pulleys that it runs off and these are the springs that bolt to the back. Um, everything like that will be changed. New screens in the windows, you can see what you're doing and the light can come through, because at the minute they are like frosted glass, you can't see anything. And then I've already got, because I had one in stock, a new panel for here. Um, and again, it's not needed, it's not gonna affect the machine, but it'll just make it look a little bit nicer. So yeah, I'll do this in parts and steps, showing you what's what. So the next updates will probably be smaller. Um, I say smaller, they might drag on, depends how boring I want to get. Um, but yeah, if you want to see what happens with a machine, put it up on a forum, not a forum, sorry, on a Facebook. And a lot of people are like, it's an XYZ, don't waste your money, just scrap it. Now, if you're a big shop earning a lot of money, yes, you could say scrap it. It, it needs a lot of work and this machine will owe me a chunk of money when it's done but in my opinion it will still owe me less than a rough or average second hand machine of this type or of this same model so i don't think it's a waste and xyz did come along and they um done me a demonstration of the new rlx 425 uh not the obviously whole machine but just the controller and the 425 is the same base and mechanical machine as i said before and it's 50,000 pounds. It's actually 54,000 including that, and that's before you um, add anything. That's just with pretty much your basic um, machine and control packages. And then you start adding an extra chuck and an extra steady rest, and it's thousand, thousand, thousand. So considering a 50,000 pound machine, that I'm not in a position to commit to, because I don't have enough continuous, um, let's say contract work, I'm more job shop, 
that that's a lot of money, 800 pound a month for a new machine. So the people that are saying scrap the machine, I understand where you're coming from because of the costs, but when you are a one man shop, this is still gonna work out probably pretty good and it's one of them ones where I've restored two or three machines now and a machine's a machine, mechanics, electrics, they're all very similar, there's nothing difficult about them. Someone else does the bed part, you know, I'm not in the hand scraping and doing that and the time, if you did that yourself, must be a mess. But um, I know this machine inside out and I've had it like two weeks. I know every nook and cranny, I know how every belt comes off, how every encoder comes off, how the ball screws come out, I know what bearings they take. Um, there already isn't anything that I don't know about this machine, of how it works. I've already looked through the wiring um, and sorted out where people have wired it up wrong, where they've probably just done a lash up fix because a relay was broken. Um, so they do say, better the devil you know, and this is gonna be that kind of scenario because I went and looked at two machines and one of them was say 7,500 plus fat and the bed wasn't as worn as this but it was still a worn bed. Um, and in my opinion, for a machine that worn and that tatty, with full of chips and leaking oil, um, with worn belts, worn ball screws, that, that did work, but it wasn't by any means a, a nice, nice, nice machine in mint condition. This one's not gonna own me much more than that. And it will be 10 times the machine. So yeah, look forward to getting it all done. Like I say, it's gonna be quite some while before they get it all done and scraped and it's not going away for about two weeks yet. But uh, yeah, keep watching. Hit the um, like and subscribe and uh, ring the bell if you wanna keep updates and you'll, you'll be told when the uh, next video's coming out and we'll show you what's doing. So yeah, cheers for watching, see you soon.